Hello and good morning friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, from today onwards we are starting a new series and this series is on law relating to copyright. As this is the first lecture in the series, today it is an introduction to the copyright law and for this discussion on introduction to copyright law, we have with us in our studios Mr. Ashmani Sewal. Mr. Ashmani Sewal is Assistant Professor in Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. Dear friends, uh, Mr. Ashmani Sewal has immense experience. He has uh, uh, given his uh, inputs to the various uh, research papers as well as uh, to the numerous articles published in various journals. Friends, if you want to ask questions from Mr. Sewal, then you can call us right in the studio. You can contact us through our toll free number. Our number is 1800110430. I repeat, our number is 1800110430. Dear friends, you are requested to call in the last 10 minutes for the easy flow of the lecture as well as we believe that after listening to the lecture, you might have queries. Your queries will be resolved within the 10 minutes. So let's welcome our guest, Mr. Ashwini Sewal, once again and let's try to have a vivacious session on introduction to copyright law. Hello sir, welcome to the lecture. Thank you Gitika. Good morning viewers. I am extremely delighted to start a new series on intellectual property law. As rightly mentioned uh, by Gitika, that this is a law relating to copyright that I am going to discuss with the audience today. Since it is an introduction lecture, an introductory lecture assumes lot of importance as far as any subject is concerned and understanding any subject is concerned. So I will go into the details of, of the copyright law in a very cursory manner in the introductory chapter so that the viewers can understand the outline for the subject which we are going to discuss over the period of time in next few lectures. So far as uh, this lecture is concerned friends. In the recent past, intellectual property has gained and assumed immense importance as a subject, especially in the field of law. To be honest with you, the subject has not uh, restricted in its importance to the legal discipline. It has spread it to other parts also. It had got its immense importance in the field of economics. It had got its immense importance in the field of science, technology, innovation. So IP is everywhere. If you know those who are researching IP, those who are talking about intellectual property, they may be knowing that IP has become very necessary part and integral part of the disciplines. The few disciplines in which it has penetrated heavily are like science and technology because of the different inventions taking place in the science and technology, innovations taking place in other sectors, economics and it has got its immense importance even in the cases of cine films, cultural things, arts, commerce and so on and so forth. So my dear friends, with this introductory remark at the outset, I would like to begin my lecture on introduction to copyright law. So far as this lecture is concerned friends, the structure, the outline to deliver the discourse is as follows. First of all, we will go with the conceptual basis of the discussion, wherein we will understand as to what is the meaning of copyright why copyright is necessary, where it has got the importance, in which sector it has got lot of importance and you know where does it play a crucial role, what is its nature, what is its rationale and why copyright has been given the importance in the legislation in international instruments relating to copyright, what has been the purpose of 
enforcing the infringement or some cases relating to infringement of the copyright. So all these things we will take up in our conceptual basis discussion that is as follows. First of all, we need to see the meaning and the definition of the copyright. Then we will look at the objectives of the copyright protection as to why it is necessary to protect the copyright. Then we will look at the need for the protection. We will go ahead and see the nature of copyright. What kind of a right is it? Is it a positive right or a negative right? What all kinds of rights will get conferred on a person after obtainment of the copyright protection? Then we will look at the rationale for copyright protection. What is the justification for conferring a protection on a subject matter for copyright? Then the relevant legislation in India that covers squarely all the different aspects, issues, nuances of the copyright or the rights conferred by the copyright to the owner of the copyright, the creator of the work, the author of the work. And then we will look at the historical background of the copyright as to how copyright law has evolved, copyright as a principle has evolved over the period of time, not only in India across the world. I mean where the, the origin lies, when, the, when did it start basically, in which year or which place it started and as to how it you know, further expanded and spread to other parts of the world. We will look at the historical background in India. Presently, we have Indian Copyright Act 1957, which is the operative law. But prior to that, if we look at the history, in India, there had been many legislations. In relation to copyright, we had two such legislations, which were the legacy of the Britishers. Being the colony of the Britishers, we had two legislations given to us by them in relation to copyright. So we will look at those two legislations, we will see the adequacy of those two legislations and the operative legislation that governs copyright in India presently that is Copyright Act 1957 friends. Well then we will look at the important treaties and conventions in the end. What are the different international instruments, international treaties that cover copyright that talks about the tenets of copyright, that talks about different issues pertaining to copyright and obligates the signatory nations for providing a uniform set of rules into their domestic jurisdictions in consonance with those international instruments. So these following things will be the you know, agenda for our discussion today. Let's begin first of all with the meaning and definition of the copyright friends. As far as the meaning and definition of copyright is concerned, as per the Copyright Act 1957 friends, copyright and its meaning is provided under section 13 of the Copyright Act 1957 and that is basically a legal definition provided under section 13 of the Copyright Act. The marginal note of section 13 reads meaning of copyright. In the main language of section 13, it describes different things on which copyright can be conferred, copyright can be given. In a common parlance, usually copyright is considered a right in the form of a monopoly in the common parlance by a layman in its lay understanding it is considered as a sort of a right on the copy on the work created by that person but since we are discussing law relating to copyright i will be failing in my duty if i will not mention and refer to section 13 because section 13 is the provision that talks about meaning of the copyright and which clearly explicitly defines the meaning of the copyright if i would like to Re it read the definition provided under section 13. If you would like to state the definition provided under section 13, 
so my dear friends it reads that copyright subsist in original literary dramatic artistic works and in cine films in sound recording etc we will see the verbatim definition when we will discuss the subject matter for the copyright because while discussing the subject matter for the copyright it is imperative to discuss section 13 so see it's the section 13 that talks about the meaning and provides the definition of the copyright under the copyright act 1957 though there is different kind of versions and definitions available to define copyright in a common parlance but let us just stick to the legal definition provided by a statute operative law that is copyright act 1957 in india well friend moving ahead to give you more insight as to what all can be given the copyright protection because from the meaning we get the idea that copyright subsist in original literary dramatic artistic works cine films sound recordings let us see some examples in the beginning superficially quickly to understand what all can be conferred a copyright protection and what kind of a works fall under the category of copyright protection friends there are certain examples that i have jotted here to be watched by the viewers here see photography is a subject matter of copyright painting is a subject matter of copyright on these following things a person can got got a copyright if he or she has created these works by applying their ingenuity and the skill the judgment applied by the person on creating the photography or the painting apart from that there are few more examples discussed here even on original literary work a copyright can be conferred mind it i am using the word original before the literary work and the reason of using the word original is that originality is the prerequisite to be proved for obtaining a protection on a literary work on an artistic work so in case you see you have got one literary work it has to be original to fetch the copyright protection let us take few more examples of the copyright protection which are superficial examples i will take up the advanced examples in my later lectures in my ensuing lectures friends if you look at few more examples even the sound recording sculptures all these things can be given the copyright protection see following things described here on screen are the subject matters as per section 13 of the copyright act and they all can be given the copyright protection similarly there are few more things which are covered under the copyright act which can fetch the copyright protection for example performance as a related right can be given the copyright protection i'll explain you the meaning of the related right later not now because it is a introductory lecture cine film as a primary work can be conferred a copyright protection so see whatever is given under section 13 i have tried to superficially cover all the broader things in my screens in my in my presentation on screen wherein i have covered the literary work i have covered the artistic work i have covered the painting art cine film performance photography etc so my dear friends these are some examples of, of copyright subject matter to understand the meaning of copyright because in legal parlance the meaning of the copyright is that copyright subsist in original artistic literary dramatic work and on sound recording and on cine films let's come to the next head of our discussion why and what are the objectives for the copyright protection why a copyright protection is conferred 
what is the reason what are the objectives so my dear friends in the case of intellectual property ip is conferred to a person on his or her intellectual creation on his or her intellectual offshoot it may be anything there are several manifestations of intellectual creations of a human mind in the case of copyright it is literary work artistic work dramatic work cine films sound recordings but in the cases of patents inventions are the creations of human mind in the case of trademarks sign signature logo label device these are some of the examples which are the creations of human mind so intellectual property is a subject basically confers a protection on the intellectual creations so whenever a person comes up with any intellectual creation in any of the stipulated forms covered under different legislations in different intellectual property legislations the person needs to be given the protection the person needs to be given the reward for the creativity for the ingenuity for the offshoot of human intellect but in the case of copyright my dear friends the objectives of protection in the form of copyright is basically to reward the labor of authors and to promote the progress of science and useful arts the more emphasis lies as far as the objectives of copyright are concerned the emphasis lies on the second objective here that primarily copyright aspires to promote the progress of science and useful arts it does not vehemently emphatically aspire to reward the labor of authors it is one of the component but the major component on which the copyright conferment revolves is the promotion of science and useful arts i would like to explain it friends see whenever a copyright protection is conferred it is conferred basically in order to give a impetus to the author to the creator of the work apart from that the purpose the next important purpose and more important purpose for conferring the protection in the form of copyright is to promote the science to disseminate the work to let the dissemination go ahead to let the promotion and progress of art and science and culture go ahead the idea is not to restrict is not to confine the promotion and progress of disciplines the idea is to rather promote the progress by conferring a copyright you might be wondering as to how you know it promotes and progresses the science and culture and other things friends it does so by conferring a copyright because the moment person fetches the copyright protection on his or her work he enjoys the copyright protection during the lifetime plus 60 more years and during that period or during this term of protection the person keeps it very secure he never lets it dissipate he keeps it secure and he is mandated to disseminate had he not been conferred the copyright protection had he not been granted the right on the property he might not have tried to kept it secure he might not have tried to keep it intact he might have left it open and it might have dissipated over the period of time but because one has been granted the right one has been given certain advantages because of the conferment of the right so one keeps it secure one can understand it by drawing an analogy with the normal concept of property what happens when we own a property we do get certain rights on our property 
we use those rights to enforce our property or our right over that property in case of any kind of a violation in case of any kind of a infringement so that is how the property remains protected it had happened because of the individualization because of the you know transformation of community rights to individual rights individuals have been given the property rights the system had evolved over the period of time when individuals started realizing that individuals should be given some individualistic rights over things in the physical or in tangible aspects in the tangible property aspects we own property rights over different things similarly in the case of intellectual property on these intangible properties we own a right so the idea behind the copyright protection was to confer a protection so that progress and promotion of science does not stop progress and promotion of culture literature does not stop it had never been to reward the person though reward and incentive and reward in the form of copyright is given to the person but the underlying philosophy is to basically dissemination the work is to basically let the dissemination go ahead i hope you have understood this concept let's move ahead and see what happens when a person gets a copyright protection well friends with the protection conferred to a person it is on the expression the person fetches the copyright protection so primarily the objective is to give the right on the expression it had never been to give a any kind of monopoly right on an idea ideas are never protected expressions are protected under the copyright law ideas can be given the protection under the patent law but not under the copyright law mind it it is a very important statement recently made by me that ideas can be given on in the in the uh, patent law a protection by the patent law but copyright never gives a protection to the ideas it is always on the expressions that the protection is conferred well friends with the conferment of the copyright authors get the right on the original expressions they get the right on the original expressions so these are the following objectives which have been enumerated here primarily to make you understand the underlying philosophy of the copyright law well friends now i would like to move ahead and would jump to the next aspect which is to my understanding is more important aspect that this law basically is a kind of ip copyright is a kind of intellectual property like patents like trademarks like designs like geographical indications and so on and so forth it is a kind of ip and something which is a kind of ip it must be conferred protection in order to strengthen the ip ecosystem in order to make the ip ecosystem very strong and robust because protection under the intellectual property regime has to be conferred on a person if he or she has created something which falls under any of the kinds of the described kinds of the ips intellectual properties and copyright is one such ip under the intellectual property regime so the need of protection is primarily originates from the reason that ip is a copyright is a kind of ip and it incentivizes the author and recognizes the natural right of the author it is something which incentivizes the author and recognizes the natural right of the author well friends i would like to explain little bit about 
natural right of the author. So whatever you create by applying your ingenuity, by applying your skills, by applying your intellect, that is, you know, your work, you must own the protection on that work. So according to the natural right theory, it must lie with you because it is your offshoot, if it, it is your intellect's offshoot, so you must own a right on that work naturally. So the need of the copyright protection arises and originates from two factors here. One, that it is kind of intellectual property and to incentivize the author to let the promotion and progress of the science to take place, it has to be conferred. And second is that it is a natural right of a person who has created the work to own the work created by him naturally. So that's why there is a need to have a very robust mechanism or a robust legislation or a robust law to protect the copyrights, to protect the different subject matters of the copyright. Well, now moving ahead to another aspect, friends, it is nature of copyright. Well, when it comes to the question of nature of copyright, what I understand and what I explain to the students that all IPs, intellectual properties are generally incorporeal properties, intangible properties, unlike tangible properties, because these are offshoots of your mind. They lie in your intellect. They are created by your intellect. They do take a shape. Once you fix, you give a concrete expression in, in, in some form. They, took a, they do take a shape. But before that, they are in, into your mind, into your intellect. And they do not come into the existence before they are not given the expression or any kind of a fixed form. So, as far as the nature of the copyright is concerned, <coughs> it is incorporeal property right in nature. And it is like other rights on normal physical objects, this right is also transferable by way of assignment and by way of licensing. It can also be transferred. So I will discuss it and we will resume the discussion after two minutes. Friends. <laughs> Thank you.
far as the nature of the copyright is concerned, I have told that uh, this is on an incorporeal property and, and copyright is an incorporeal property right in nature and it is transferable by way of assignment and licensing my friends. Like other properties it can also be transferred to the need to the interested parties. Well friends, as I have discussed that copyright cannot be conferred on ideas, it can be conferred only on the expressions. So, ideas over here are not protected under the copyright law, only expressions are protected. I will explain you what does expression mean in the cases of copyright. When does idea gets converted into an expression and when does idea remains mere idea which must not be conferred a protection. Though there lies a dichotomy between the idea and expression, but this dichotomy has been beautifully explained in many of the judgments of the courts. So, in our discussions in ensuing lectures, we will take up many such cases where idea expression dichotomy was deliberated, was pondered over by the various courts of different jurisdictions and they have successfully been able to deliver and to resolve this dichotomy between idea and expression. Well friends, going ahead with the nature of copyright, it is bundle of rights. It is not a simple right, one single or two rights conferred on a person. Bundle of rights are conferred on the persons obtaining the copyright. When you create a work by applying your intellect, by applying your ingenuity, you after the conferment of the copyright, you are given many rights. There are several rights to save you. You get the right to reproduce the work. You get the right to translate the work, you get the right to go for the adaptation of the work, you get the right to issue copies of that work to the public, you get the right to communicate that work to the public and so on and so forth. So, generally in the case of copyright, it is said that copyright gives you bundle of rights. It does not come with one single right, it comes with bundle of rights. So, one who gets the copyright protection, he enjoys many rights and he can bring in many kinds of works with one creation because he has got many such rights which he can exploit and use solely because of the conferment of the copyright on that person. Well friends, going ahead in the nature of copyright, see the time protection or the time duration for which copyright is given protection is lifetime of the author plus 50 plus years after the death of the demise of the author. So, suppose you create something in this lifetime that remains with you throughout this lifetime. Another 60 years or 50 years will be given to you depending on the nature of the subject matter which you have created for your exclusive use, for the exclusive use to be done by the legal heirs of yours. Your LRs will be enjoying it, your legal heirs will be enjoying it after your demise. So, it is a long term protection and during that term dominion over that work lies with you. If you are going for a transfer of it, you are assigning certain rights to other people, you can do that by way of assignment and transfer. But primarily it is conferred to the person obtaining the copyright. Well friend, let us go ahead and discuss another important component of conceptual basis. It is why copyright matters, why it is so important. Since I have told you in the very beginning and in my previous lectures of patents and trademarks that intellectual property as such 
has gained immense importance has gained assumed immense importance in today's context in the present scenario not only in india but worldwide intellectual property has been successful in penetrating all walks of life if you look carefully in every day's affair we come across so many different kinds of intellectual properties in our normal routine though we fail to notice and recognize them but different kind of ips we confront and we use in our life every day necessarily starting from use of your cell phone to a textbook that you are reading to a you know water bottle that you are using to consume water to a light that you use for reading or for other purposes at home so everywhere there lies some sort of a intellectual property owned by somebody possessed by somebody but that someone has by conferring by getting the copyright by getting the patent by getting the trademark protection has let others to use it on the promise of some written to be received by him in the expectation of some returns to be received by him so copyright like other intellectual properties is equally important it is lucrative if you look at the cine film industry in india bollywood industry is very rich industry it has given employment to masses it has created good work good cinema and tremendous work is done in the film industry itself alone majority of the intellectual property is being created in the cine film industry in india apart from that there is a separate industry of publishers book writers authors they all create different kinds of works which are copyrightable works painters and so on and so forth so it is a lucrative property owned by the authors but this statement is not true always there are certain people who are involved in the creations of copyrights or copyrightable subject matters but they don't fetch and mint lot of money they live in penury they live in pittance there are many such small players even in the film industry which is considered the hub of copyrighted work creations even in that industry there are people they don't get you know reasonable payments for the work created by them it is always the director it is always the big fish producers you know they make lot of money out of their work created by the help of many small players so those small players they don't get their due they don't get reasonable payments for the work done by them many of you might have seen the protest recent protest done by the small lyricists small composers small you see back side back end helpers in the film industry protesting for the due payments they have not been paid for long they were protesting that we are not being paid properly by the producers by the directors the film releases the film fetches lot of money and returns but they still remain unpaid for long durations for one year or two years together still those small creators with the help of them a long work is created a big copyrighted work is created but their grievance is not addressed so there is you know uh, uh, arguably you can say that uh, copyright is lucrative is not that lucrative it depends who is creating the copyright who is possessing the copyright and that is how i mean it it becomes you know dicey to say that 
it is always lucrative. That's why I said that it is not necessary that copyright is always lucrative. Undoubtedly, it gives you some returns, but returns must come reasonably at a reasonable time. If your returns are not coming reasonably at a reasonable time, I don't think that it can be called a lucrative property. Going ahead with another importance of the copyright is, it is a key business asset nowadays. Let us take example of a business entity. For their promotions, they make some advertisements. For their promotions, the business entity comes up with some placards, some pamphlets, catalogues, some written material. All these things are copyrightable subject matters. Their advertisements can be called cinematograph works, their catalogues, their pamphlets, placards can be called literary works, can fall under the category of literary works. And different things used by the business entity, which are the subject matters of copyright, are their assets actually. All such copyrights owned by the business entities are their assets and they make returns out of those assets. And whenever there takes place any merger, any acquisition or any deal of transfer of the assets, even the intellectual property assets are valued. A proper valuation of the IP assets is done and on the basis of their reckoning, the property in the form of intellectual property gets transferred along with the physical property in the cases of mergers. So it is a key business asset. It is granted for owning rights. It spurs growth. As I have told in the very beginning that the underlying philosophy of copyright protection is not always necessarily to reward the labor of the author. Rather it is to let the promotion and progress of science to continue, to go ahead, not to stop. So it spurs growth of culture, of music, of art, of science, of literature, etc. It incentivizes the creator too by giving him the property protection and by giving him the rights to sue the people infringing his right by enforcing him by giving him the exclusivity right of use of that subject matter for lifetime plus 50 plus years. And it gives the, the, the recognition and fame to the author to the creator of the work. So there are multifarious reasons which makes copyright a very important and interesting subject, which makes copyright intricate too. Because in every kind of a factor attributed here or you know described here, you will find some sort of a criticism, you will find some sort of a argument or a diametrically opposite opinion of somebody. So copyright is of important is, is of importance and has been always of importance. But there has always been issues in determining some intricacies of the copyright, in determining some nuances relating to copyright, in determining some topical issues of the copyright. We will take up all such advanced and emerging topical issues in our later sessions. But let us first see the next aspect for the copyright protection. What do you think should be the rationale of protection of the copyright? Like other intellectual properties friend, the rationale for the copyright protection is simple and you know similar to the other intellectual properties. Let us have a look of different reasons which are vindicating the or justifying the protection to be conferred in the form of a copyright. It is a natural right. It is moral right of a person to enjoy the property protection on his work. 
and it is a moral right of the person that his work must not be used in an inappropriate manner his work must not be used in a negative manner his work must not be defamed by mutilating it by destroying its essence by destroying its spirit so there are certain rationales for conferring a copyright one is that it is a natural right because you are the creator of the work so one who is the creator of the work he must be given the right naturally he must be rewarded it naturally it is a moral right of the person economic incentive rationale is the another factor that can be attributed as far as the justification for copyright is concerned it incentivizes the person economically to create more works if the maker of a movie does not earn and does not get the returns by creating the movie will he be incentivized to create more movies will he be incentivized to create more works if the author of the one written text will not be given the incentive economic incentive or some other kind of a reward in the form of recognition and fame he'll never be motivated he'll never be you know aspiring to create more works so the rationale is simple that one must be given the economic incentive as well as some sort of social incentive in the form of recognition in the society in the form of name and fame in the society it increases competition and benefits the consumer well friends when one is conferred a copyright protection another competitor of the person feels like owning a copyright on another subject matter so that he becomes richer right in ownership in owning intellectual property assets in fetching intellectual property assets so they do compete and that is how you know the competition increases when one law intellectual property law confers a property protection on a person do not we aspire to own more and more properties i am not sounding idealistic i know i am sounding materialistic and see the word at large has become very materialistic as far as ownerships of different things are concerned so people are acquiring more and more gaining ownerships on more and more things we always keep on aspiring to own different properties so even in the case of intellectual property the same kind of a competitiveness same sapradha that lies and people do aspire to create more to own more which actually eventually becomes very beneficial for the consumers because with the increase in the competition in the market consumer benefits because consumer gets the choices the differential pricing he can make the choices to buy the product to purchase the product on a differential pricing so it is always beneficial for a person to you know have more and more creative works in the society and that is why it is said that copyright is necessary to be conferred there are different explanations different views available of different jurists who have propounded these theories natural right theory or uh, moral right rationale economic incentive rationale and competition rationale i would like to start the discussion first with the natural right rationale as i have said that it is always arguable to say that natural right theory or for that matter economic right theory or for that matter moral right theory is always clinching no it cannot be said ever that every time these theories are cogent and clinching they are not it's all depends on the perspective and understanding of the person i i am not here to impose any of the opinions propounded by any of the jurists 
आई एम हेयर टू गिव यू डिफरेंट परस्पेक्टिव एंड अ स्पेक्ट्रम ऑफ परस्पेक्टिव इट्स अप टू यू टू चूज वन एंड टू गो हेड इन योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस सब्जेक्ट सो देर आर ऑलवेज टू ओपिनियंस इन रिलेशन टू वन कॉन्सेप्ट और वन ओपिनियन इवन इन द केस ऑफ नेचुरल राइट थ्योरी द ओपोनेंट्स ऑफ द नेचुरल राइट थ्योरी से दैट वन कैन नेवर क्रिएट और कैन नॉट ऑलवेज क्रिएट अ डेब्यूटेंट वर्क it is always a work created relying on the earlier existing works so somebody who is coming up with a work and seeking a protection justifying the protection on the basis of a natural right seems wrong because the argument goes that one who has created that work he might had referred to multifarious works before creating that work owned by different people or created by different people may not be owned necessarily some earlier authors had created some works those several works are being now relied by one new author and a new work is created by that new author should he be necessarily given a right and a justification in the form of natural right be attributed to that so it is always arguable my dear friends to say that all the theories and justifications are right they are not justifications are there some are clinching some are not some are promising some are not so it's up to you to decide very few works are debutant works very few works are such original works which can be said that these are the original works otherwise the works are created by relying on the shoulders of others on the existing works prevailing in the society so in the cases of all these rationales provided here economic rationale moral rationale natural right rationale competition rationale you if you'll study more and if you'll develop more understanding you will find that it seems distorted the concepts are distorted so there is a there is a you know chance for you there is a prospect for you to study this area in a very in depth and meticulous manner so that you can develop your own understanding of you know relying on one particular side or you know become to to be to be a ardent you know proponent on one particular side it may be pro ipi ip side where you know people are saying that uh, more and more ip should be granted because there are several justifications available there is entire ip side which says and the 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 you know the group the the uh, proponents on the entire ip they say there is no need to confer the ip because it is always based on the works of others so it should be left open for the people for the masses to be accessed freely to be used freely let us take an example interesting example friends a book is written by one author by applying some you know efforts lot of efforts has been applied by him in the creation of that work should not he be given the right over that work created by him this is one aspect another aspect of the coin is that he has referred to multifarious works while creating that work why does he read a right to own that work when he has referred to multifarious works while creating that work he should not be given the copyright on that work which he has created or brought to the existence because the help of the others so friends there has always been a contradiction and 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 a constant tussle in the proponents deciphering different justifications and deciphering different counter justifications in relation to conferment of copyright i'll go with the theory of incentivizing i will go with the theory of you know providing the protection to the creator because to me it is very promising and cogent and clinching i find it very promising to give a impetus to the creator to create more otherwise he will never feel like creating any more work 
he will never remain motivated to create any more work. So, see there uh, is always you see different sorts of arguments coming across to the academicians, to the students of the Lord relating to copyright. Nowadays especially when you know there is a separate campaign going on in relation to open access which emphasizes more on leaving the copies to be used freely by the public in the internet medium instead of owning a copyright in a traditional manner on a textbook or on a written con content. This campaign has gained a momentum friends in the recent past and many renowned academicians and authors have started keeping their works free of cost into the public domain with no copyright attached to their works. They are perhaps of that mindset that their work must go to the masses, must get disseminated to the masses, it must not stop. So, it is their choice, but there are on the other hand such authors who claim the copyright first and does not let the work to propel and to proceed or to disseminate further. But my dear friends, in the recent past, I have come across a reading where it was astonished for me also to notice that almost 60% of copyrighted material in this world has fallen into the public domain, either by purview of cessation of the term of the copyright protection or perhaps because of the willingness of the authors and creators of their, those works that they have left them open into the public domain to be accessed freely by the consumers, by the users, by the masses. It is very good prima facie that such, such an abundant work has fallen into the public domain. But it is scary too for a proponent who says that work must be given the protection. There has to be an individual's right on the individual work created by him or her if he has qualified for the protection. So the trends are very scary and very interesting. We will keep on discussing these trends in our ensuing lectures friends and we will keep on discussing you know chronologically some very interesting things which are there under the law relating to copyright which includes the subject matter for the copyright, the rights owned by the person fetching the copyright, the ownership obtained by the copyright owner or the author of the work and then we will go ahead with the different kinds of infringements in the cases of copyright. And then you know the, the public rights because striking a balance between the private right and the public right is important too. So for that matter law has also provided us the public right provision in the form of section 52 of the copyright. So we will look at that provision as well in order to understand the thrust on the public right on the one hand and the thrust on the private right on the another. That is how we will proceed in the ensuing lectures. I rest for the day. Have a good day, my dear viewers. Thank you very much. With this note, thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for the productive session. And dear friends, as uh, said by Mr. Ashwini Sawal, that we would be covering a lot in our forthcoming sessions. Till then, uh, take care. Goodbye. But yes, uh, keep writing us your suggestions and feedbacks at uh, info.cec at nic.in as well as you can post your questions on the same ID. We would be meeting again soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you once thank again. Thank you.